Hello and welcome to another video on basic fiber optics. In the last video, we discussed modulation instability and saw how the presence of self phase modulation, anomalous dispersion, and noise can turn an otherwise continuous signal into a very chaotic pulse train with regularly spaced pulses but sort of randomly fluctuating peak powers. I mentioned in that video that there might be some interesting statistics to the chance of getting a pulse with a certain peak power here. So that's what we're going to investigate in this video. Essentially, I've just run the split step method a very large number of times and extracted all of the peak powers that came out, recorded them, and then plotted those inside of some histograms that we can begin to analyze. So let's take a look at that. So plotting the data, we see that we actually get a peak power all the way up to something like 15. We have around, I think it's like, uh, yeah, it's like 85,000 uh, individual peak power pulses I've extracted here. So if we take a look at the histogram, we can see that it seems to peak around 2.5 maybe, and then it decreases exponentially, like like so. So notice that the bin width here is 0 0.1, so if you look at the um, histogram here on the log scale, we can see that this spike right here around 15 watts, well that has a probability density of 10 to the negative 4, so multiplying by 0 0.1, that gives us 10 to the negative 5, so there's like a 1 in 100,000 chance of finding a pulse with a peak power of 15 here, but most of the time we're going to find one that has a peak power of around 2.5, and then somewhere in between the chance of finding um, pulse with a peak power of 4, 6, 8, and so on, given by this, this histogram. So let's also try and fit a distribution to this histogram here. It turns out that the gamma distribution might be a good good candidate because we can see we have a sort of de exponentially decreasing behavior for large values and something that increases quite quickly for small values here. So fitting that model to the um, histogram, we find that the value of A should be basically 6, which means that in this region here, the um, probability grows as P to the power of 5. And the decay rate here, which is inside the exponential, is around let's say 0.5. That basically determines how it decreases towards the, the tail here. And we can see that the smallest non-zero probability is indeed around 10 to the negative 5. If you look at the log domain, we can see that the model actually undershoots the real probability slightly. And I'm not entirely sure if that's just a sort of numerical issue or if it's because the probability of finding a pulse with a very high peak power actually is slightly higher than the gamma model would expect. Um, but nevertheless, it's kind of interesting pattern to observe right here. So if you think a bit more about this um, one spike we see right here with a power of 15 watts, it's actually an example of what we call optical rogue waves. The idea is that if you have any kind of wave system that both exhibits uh, well, wave-like behavior of course, but also some kind of chaotic behavior typically initialized both by noise and some kind of nonlinearity, then it's possible to have a um, sort of randomly fluctuating amplitude that sometimes has a very large and very sudden spike. You can imagine that um, if you simply send in a continuous wave signal with a power of 1 watt into a fiber like this, and you look at the pulse strain that comes out, then most of the time you'll see a pulse coming out with a power of around, uh, what's that, like 2.5 watts, but occasionally you'll get one that really spikes up to a value of like 15 watts, uh, quite unexpectedly. Now this doesn't just occur for the case of non-data optics, it actually also occurs in something a bit more uh, real world, uh, real life, which is um, the ocean because um, the interference and interaction of all these waves on the, the sea can actually sometimes cause a water wave with a much, much higher amplitude than the average wave. So you can imagine if you're sailing out at sea and you see, let's say, um, waves with an average amplitude of maybe just one or two or three meters, maybe you can kind of deal with that. But all of a sudden you see a, a wave, one in a hundred thousand times, that has <laughs> an amplitude of 15, 15 meters. Like that, uh, that's really bad news for your, your boat. So um, anyway, it's kind of nice to know that this kind of strange and unexpected behavior we see for the case of non optics also has an analogy in something a bit more uh, down-to-earth like, like water. So anyway, I hope you found this explanation and exploration of the statistics of modulation stability interesting. Feel free to check out the source code in the description and stay tuned for more videos. Bye-bye.